Hello, my name is Charlotte Cooner, and I'm going to be helping you solve ordinary everyday problems with calculus. Today I'll be talking about tea. Now I don't know about you, but I love a good cup of tea in the morning. The question is, when is it the perfect temperature to drink? I don't want to drink it too hot or it'll burn my tongue, but if it's too cold, it's no fun to drink it. So this brings the question, how long should you let tea sit before you drink it? According to the internet, the optimal temperature for hot liquids such as coffee or tea is about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Based on this observation, I decided to do a little experiment. First of all, I'm going to brew a cup of tea and measure its original temperature and the temperature of the room. I'm going to use Newton's Law of Cooling to estimate approximately how long it's going to take for my tea to cool to the right temperature. Then I'll measure the actual amount of time it took to get to that temperature and see how correct my estimations were. Alright, now that we have our cup of tea, it's time to use Newton's Law of Cooling to estimate how long it's going to take us to reach 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we have the question, what is Newton's Law of Cooling? Now the original equation, as you can see here, is actually a differential equation, so we have to solve this using integration, which I will explain in my extras video, link down in the description below. So after we integrate this equation, we arrive at this equation. This is the equation we want to use, but first I have to explain what each variable means. M is the room temperature, Y of 0 is the initial temperature of the T, T is time in minutes, K is the constant that we solved for in the extras video. Here's the actual values. The room temperature was 63 degrees Fahrenheit, the initial temperature of the liquid was 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and the constant that we solved for ended up being negative 0.04368. Now, using our equation to solve for when it would equal 140 degrees Fahrenheit, we got 9.58 minutes after the tea started brewing. The actual measured time was 10 minutes. This makes the percent error 4.2%. This is actually super exciting because I was anticipating a much larger percent error and 4.2% is actually quite small. I guess this just goes to show how accurate calculus can be. My name is Charlotte Cooner. This has been Solving Ordinary Everyday Problems with Calculus. Hope you enjoyed it. If you need more information, click on the description below for my extras video explaining all the math. Goodbye. The end.